I know I'm a few days late on this to post my September favorites video. Um, I should have done it on the first and it is the, oh yeah, third today. So what can you do, right? That's <laughs> okay. We, I post them later than this before, but uh, for all my Mean Girls fans out there, it's not only Mean Girls Day, October 3rd, it's also a Wednesday, and on Wednesdays we wear pink, so <laughs> I'm just like, it's so perfect, it's so perfect this year. Uh, anyways, I'm just gonna jump right into the list. It's kind of all over the place this year, but, you know, hang with me. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but at least it's a little bit longer of a list than it's been the past few months when I've done these, so there's that. But, jumping right in, first things first, you guys probably knew the second I reviewed it that this was gonna end up on the list is... A much loved thing which kind of surprised me given that I didn't initially think I liked it that much but then I ended up loving it within like the first day of continuing to use it and it's the chapstick total hydration uh, peach tea lip oil originally I thought you can't eat or drink with it on well that kind of is a deal breaker for me but then I found out oh wait yeah you can and it definitely won't hurt you so you know just just saying that actually did a lot to go a long way for the way I view this. It actually is very, very crazy effective. My sister was just like, yeah, but you don't like wear lipsticks really that dry out your lips, so why would you need a lip oil? Bitch, please. <laughs> yes, I do, just you don't seem to be here when I do, but anyway, this just is really good, and being Chapstick brand, it's affordable and accessible to everybody. It's not one of the crazy expensive ones, you know, like uses that are like 30 or more and I'm like that's not happening I, I thought it was crazy I paid six dollars for this but anyway it just it smells so good it feels amazing on it just I can't say enough good things about this it does make me look way more forward to uh, reviewing all the other lip oils that I bought from Chapstick as well, all the tinted ones. I've got all six now so those will be forthcoming and there's the other one that came out at the same time as this that I still need to do those are all coming up, so that's enough time talking about this. So then with Crazy Rumors, both of them that I reviewed last month, I ended up liking way more than I expected to. Uh, the Leaping Bunny one, the uh, Plum Apricot. I'm still shocked that this one is as good as it is. I just, it blows my mind. I mean, individually, both those flavors are good, but I really wasn't sure how they would do together, especially since, like, I have a crap ton of nieces and nephews, I have dealt with my fair share of baby food, and there is definitely plum apricot baby food, and it just smells straight up pukey. So I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be a shit show. But no, it's actually really good, and it works really well, and it's all organic. Like, what's not to love? But then it got topped by the chocolate strawberry one, so it's just like, well... I have long said that of the organic brands, Crazy Rumors, at least with the indie ones, because uh, if we're including all of them, probably the title goes to Burt's Bees, but if we're talking about indie brands, Crazy Rumors, hands down, is the fave. They just, everything they make is wonderful, as far as I'm concerned, so. But speaking of Burt's Bees, this probably got more use than anything this month and I'm probably going to soon need to buy another one because I have used the crap out of this but the chai tea one oh my god just I'm gonna put more on right now because I just love it so freaking much it just it stays on like a dream it feels wonderful it smells heavenly I mean Obviously, I'm a little bit biased being the tea aficionado that I am, but I mean, this just is wonderful. Who thought we would see the day that I would find one that I like more than their ginger spice one? One that I would like more than their pumpkin spice one? The day has come, and it's this guy right here. I almost want to say it may be my favorite Burt's Bees at this point, but then I remember the cucumber mint, and it's like... That's right, okay, this still is behind that, that is still my day, but um, but this is number two right behind that though, and that is saying a lot, so there's this, and then speaking of matte liquid lipsticks, oh, you know, that I supposedly don't wear, the Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipstick in Babe Alert, which I know was a last second edition, squeaked in at the end of the month, but 
I wore this shit to Ringo and it stayed on all night, even after eating and drinking and everything stayed on perfectly. No smudges, no fading. I am shook. <laughs> I see why people speak so highly of Smashbox now and even for being a matte. It didn't dry anything out. I think this may be the only matte liquid lipstick I've ever used in my life that doesn't do that. Because usually that is my big beef with matte. I don't like them because they make your lips feel like sandpaper by the time you're done and I just can't hang with that. That is like a surefire way to make sure I'm going to bite the crap out of my lips till they bleed. I just, it doesn't do well with me. But this one doesn't do that. They, you know, I guess there's enough moisturizers in it to where even though it feels dry while it's on, it doesn't actually physically dry them out, which is the main thing as far as I'm concerned, so. And it's actually a really nice color. I know in the tube, doesn't look like it's that different from my natural lip color, but go back and watch that review if you're skeptical. This is actually, like, a lot darker on than it is in the tube, which... I'm still wondering what sorcery they did there, because you saw when I swatched it, I was like, holy shit, that's dark, but, um, yeah. I'm very, very impressed with this. I don't know that I'm ready to plunk down the cash on a full size of it since I just don't have the budget for that, but I will quite enjoy the stuff I get from Ipsy, and this is where I got that one, so there's that. Now, onto the non-lippy things, since we always do those first. The first one, I have been loving the hell out of this too, it's from Bath & Body Works. We've got a bunch of Bath & Body Works stuff this month, by the way is the uh, Fine Fragrance Mist in Champagne, Apple, and Honey. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna put more on right now. I just, I love this so hard. I don't remember if I've reviewed it yet or not. If not, I need to. It'll get a glowing review, you guys. You just wait and see, but oh, that is so nice. With Bath & Body Works, I find with the Fragrance Mists, it's very hit and miss when they do apple because sometimes it's very authentic. It smells really nice. Other times it's like, oh, this is like artificial Jolly Rancher apple. I guess that's cool, but uh, no. But this is the good kind. This is the authentic smelling kind, and I don't know that I really get honey out of it, but I mean, it does smell like apples. It just smells so good. If you like the scent of apples, do yourself a favor, grab this. It's part of their fall line. There's like one, two, three, four. There's seven of them that they have out right now that look all beautiful in autumnal, like leaves straight in a row. Yeah, I kind of have all seven. But, uh, <laughs> hey, I don't usually treat myself like that, but when it's the fall scents, I make an exception. So <laughs> they're my favorite ones all year. So that is when I go nuts, and then only at the semi-annual sales outside of that. So, anyway, it is really, really good. Again, if you like the scent of apple, you will love this. Just... Thank me later. <laughs> uh, next on here, even though I currently cannot burn it because, you know, the Madre is home from the hospital with her oxygen, I got these reviewed before she came home, so I got to enjoy them somewhat. Uh, the uh, Bath & Body Works 3 Wood Candle in Root Beer Float. It did discolor a little after I burnt it, but this it just is crazy how spot on they got it. Just, that straight up smells like a and root beer. I'm like, holy crap, I don't know how you did that. Especially without it even having a brown tint or anything, because I would be convinced that's got root beer actually physically in there. The only weird thing is that while it's burning, it just, it's so strong that it's like, I bet this is what a root beer factory smells like. It's root beer made in factories, I feel like probably made in factories. I don't know. Uh, wherever root beer comes from then, I guess I never really thought about it. I'm sure it comes from a factory of some sort, but yeah, it just it smells really good. Unfortunately, I think this was only sold during the semi-annual sale. I could be wrong, but I think it was one of the ones that came out for like a minute and then was gone just as fast. I did get this one, the, what was it, the orange cream or whatever it was, that just smells like lemon lime in reality, and the banana split one. I, for obvious reasons, skipped the pina colada one. And then the other candle, which, again, it's killing me that I can't burn this one, but I'm, I'm okay with just leaving it open, just unlit, and letting the scent fill the room, is the apple cinnamon cider one. And honestly, I find that this is almost a perfect dupe for, um, 
I think it was Glade, put out these little, whatever size, about this tall, of single wick candles and just little jars would be. A couple years ago, like half red, half orange, but this is almost that exact scent, and I love the hell out of those. I had like four of them a few years ago. We went through them like a beast. I went back, I got more of them. Went through most of those too. Um, and yet here's like basically a big giant version of that scent. I'm like, oh hell yes. I am all about the cinnamon, all about the apple, just, yes please. I know, you're all, so where's your sweet cinnamon pumpkin? Just chill, chill, probably this month, even though, again, can't burn it, but it's not the only thing I have in that scent, so hang in there. Anyway, so the other Bath and Body Works stuff from this month, this I think I did review, was the, um, the hand cream in I Wish, which the actual scent is Summer Skies. There seems to be some controversy of what the scent actually is. I don't really care. I just think it smells good, so I don't really care what it's supposed to be. Um, because when I tried to list it and, like, get the info of the scent notes before I reviewed it, two different listings came up for it. Identical packaging, but completely different scent notes, and I'm like, I can kind of smell this from this one in it. But I can also kind of smell that from that one in it. I have no idea which one's the correct one, and again, I don't care. It smells really good. It works really well. I'm gonna be really sad when it's gone because this one's been discontinued. This came out around like Christmas time last year. So I've been trying to go sparingly with it, but oh my gosh, I just am in love with it. So, the last of the Bath and Body Works stuff from this month. Yeah, and as you who watch the review have no doubt in your mind this was gonna make it in, but the spooktacular foaming soap. <laughs> the one that I just think smells so good to like a level where it's kinda weird. <laughs> I think it smells that good. And it's so sparkly and just I I'm not going to rehash everything about it, but just, you know, in case anyone was wondering, yes, it is definitely worthy of making it into the favorites list. But because it also didn't come back this year for Halloween. Notice that it's only down this far, despite my hardcore loving on it. <sighs> Trying to make it last, because once it's gone, it's apparently gone, because the Amazon prices for it, not happening. So, then I've got a couple of CDs to share with you guys this time. Usually there's only one, but this month we get two. So the first one, I wanted to get this the day it came out, but I had like no money in my bank account to do it that day, but I finally got a hold of it. It is the Judy Garland From the Heart album, which you're probably wondering, she's been dead since the 60s, how is there still new Judy Garland albums? Just hang with me. Uh, they took a bunch of her old radio performances and such, and they remastered them and made them basically sound as if they'd been recorded today. Like, the first few on it are so far back history-wise that even with all the remastering, there's only so much you can do that it's gonna sound like their age. They're literally from, like, the 30s and 40s be that as it will. But the rest of them. I got absolute goosebumps listening to this. Didn't matter if it was through regular speakers, through my computer, headphones, earbuds, doesn't matter. It, the, the, effect, the effect, I should say, happened every single time. I sent a few of the tracks to my sister on Facebook and she, even her first reaction was, oh my god, goosebumps. I was like, right? Right? Like, oh my god. <laughs> How did some of these recordings just stay under a rock until now? I don't know, but it was also kind of cool looking at the dates that they were recorded on and realizing just how many of these have personal significance to me for one reason or another. A lot of family members' birthdays are in here. Some of them, like, the exact year and day they were born. Like, there was one from, like... The year and day my dad was born. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. There's one from one year to the day before my mom was born. There's like just a whole bunch in here. I just found it really cool. <laughs> but um, the particular track list on this, I'm going to do a proper review of this, so maybe I don't need to go into the track list. But, um, but yeah, I, I was going to review it and then... Paul McCartney's new album came out, and this kind of got swept under the rug <laughs> for, for obvious reasons for this guy, for Egypt Station, which, yes, this comes off. I thought it was weird when I first got it, but 
has an elastic on it. And weirder still, I didn't realize it was elastic when I first got it. I thought it was just a ribbon, so I went to slip it off, and it went zing across my room. I was just like, shit. Well, I'm probably never seeing that again. I have no idea where it just went. Um, and it took me like a good two days to figure out where it zung off to, because I didn't really see where it went. I just knew it went. And I was like, so that's a thing. Um, but the reason that it has that is because of this, uh, they call it a concertina spread. So it opens kind of like an accordion. Like, I'm going to bounce it a little so you can see from the side. Right? Like, actually, let me try and do it this way. I don't know if I can get it all on camera in one go. Oh, there we go! Okay. And it just, it's really kind of trippy. All the artwork on it is Paul's. Like, I recognize the cover artwork from, I want to say, like, 2004 when he did that art exhibit of his paintings. Um, I knew I'd seen it. I couldn't quite place where from. But I went and typed in Paul McCartney paintings, and he was like one of the first ones that came up. I was like, aha! Alright then. And most people kind of forgot about that whole thing, since nobody really talked about it, even at the time as it was going on. But I was kind of invested in it. But I mean, granted, they're kind of weird, but, you know, it's Paul. He's allowed. <laughs> um, again, this will also be getting, like, a full-on review. But not today, guys that and then the back side of it has the lyrics and some photos and it's just really cool and then inside of it we've got the actual disc itself which you may notice still has the cling wrap on it only because since I pre-ordered it from Amazon like three hours before midnight of the day it was slated to be released since I had the pre-order in place they were like, ah, with your order, you also get a digital copy free on us. You can download it now. So I downloaded it now, and I've been playing the digital copy exclusively. I have not even taken the CD out yet, but that's okay. That is perfectly all right. So <laughs> Honestly, we all know the first thing I was going to do is pop it in the computer and rip to MP3 anyway. So, I mean, that just makes it easier for me. It takes out the middleman. But this album, I have played this to absolute death, and it has not even gotten a tiny bit stale on me. So that is saying a lot. And given how iffy I was on the three singles at first, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I liked the uh, you one, like, right off the bat. But um, the other two, I was super iffy about them and really didn't like one of them the day that I first heard them. Oh, they've grown on me. They have quickly become some of my favorites on the album. So there is that. But, um, you know, just how much the whole album kind of, like, takes cues from his career at various points. I notice things in every single track on here that harken back to any different point in his career, be it with the Beatles, be it with Wings, be it his own solo stuff all over the board and some of them are so vague to where it's like I know I recognize this but I can't even quite pinpoint where I recognize it from but I know that I do it's so strange and so trippy and it makes the whole thing feel really familiar even on the first listen as a McCartney fan so I just think it's amazing personally and then the last thing on the list is the only one that I don't have a physical item to hold up for and a lot of you may or may not have even heard of it, but it's Nicolas Cage's new film, Mandy. I know, if you have heard of it, you're probably wondering, Jen, you of all people have that on your list? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I realize this is kind of like really out of left field for me, but... Honestly, though, I enjoyed the crap out of it. Like, probably more than I should have. Like, my friend actually had it, and she sent it to me. And I watched it and just, like, fell in love with it. I've watched it, like, probably four or five times now. But, um, I don't know how to describe this movie without either giving away massive spoilers or without it sounding that shit insane, which, I mean, it kind of is, but in the best possible way. <laughs> like, this film, I can only equate to being 
like a horror film literally on acid like that is an actual thing that is a thing in the movie like this is not me just pulling words out of my ass lsd is very much a thing in the movie so um it is an appropriate comparison to make but i'm again trying to not give spoilers but holy hell just i tried to describe this movie to my brother on the way to go see ringo the other night and he's just like he kept turning around and looking at me like what the fuck did you watch? And I was like, I told you, it was called Mandy, you should watch it. And he's like, I I'm not sure I want to. I'm like, oh, you should. You would love it if you would just watch it. He's like, I don't know about that. I'm like, seriously, seriously, if you just would, you'd thank me later because it's fucking amazing. But <laughs> whatever. Um, I didn't find it scary, weirdly enough, which is hilarious. Given that I used to be the biggest scaredy cat in the world with anything, even the tiniest shred creepy, not even necessarily scary, I would never have even dreamed of watching a horror film. Now I find I'm kind of into it. When the fuck did that happen? I don't know. I don't know what snapped in my brain towards, like, they don't scare me anymore. I think my anxiety finally just tipped over the edge of a cliff and tapped out. I was like... See you never, and I'm apparently just good to go on stuff like this now, and they don't really scare me. I say that now, now that I say that. Watch somebody show me one that will actually scare the crap out of me. <laughs> but I mean, I'm even like watching American Horror Story now, which again, words I never thought would leave my lips, and yet here we are, and have been enjoying the crap out of it, although still but hurt that they killed off my favorite character in literally two episodes this season. I'm just like, could, could like, Joan Collins not be dead? Like, can we bring her back? You, you brought some of these other people back. C can we get her back? It's kind of like Liza Minnelli if she were forced stable, you know? Uh, <laughs> I've always kind of felt that way about Joan Collins, so it, it's like if you put Elizabeth Taylor and Liza Minnelli in a blender, you would get Joan Collins, I think. Th that is basically the way I view her. I pretty much like anything she's ever been in because of that, but anyway. Um, but yeah, I've been watching that too. That should also be on this list. Fuck it. Okay, fine. Another entry. American Horror Story. Apocalypse. So, <laughs> I have not seen the previous seasons, although for how much I'm enjoying this one, I am highly considering going through Netflix and just watching all of them. I've seen little bits and pieces from some of the prior seasons, and I've liked what I've seen. So, plus, you know, there was Lady Gaga in one of the seasons, and at the time I was like, man, I love Gaga, but oh, that's probably too scary for me to handle. And now I'm like... Oh, shut up, you pussy. Go watch it. So, um, I'm, I'm probably gonna go watch that as well as all the other ones, but, you know, as you do. <laughs> I have found that really scary stuff generally doesn't scare me, and, like, my one scary movie thing that bothers me is more just because it grosses me out than scares me. It's just, I cannot with freaking zombie anything just because it's gross to me. So, like, Walking Dead... It's not because it scares me, it's just because I can't freaking physically look at it. I cannot do it. I've tried. I, I cannot do it. But it doesn't scare me. Like, ironically, there's that uh, computer game, Plague Incorporated, which... <laughs> Don't judge me! Don't freaking judge me unless you've tried playing it, but... Uh, there is a virus on there that, like, turns people into zombies, and honestly, it's one of the most fun modes in the game, so it's not even that the concept of zombies freaks me out. They're just gross as shit, and I don't want to look at them. As long as I don't have to look at them, throw in zombies all you want, but if I have to look at them, oh, fuck that. But, um, I have a cousin who, like, straight up believes in the zombie apocalypse. She sleeps with a machete behind her bed. I shit you not. I am not exaggerating. Not one iota. I swear to God. Um, my mother's name. Uh, just, she actually literally does. She has her zombie apocalypse, like, survival kit and everything. I'm like, bruh, you, you know that that's, like, not real, right? She's like, dude, it's totally real and I'm ready. I'm like, I really, really hope with every bone in my body that you're just being sarcastic and running overboard with it because you actually believe that. I mean, I know I'm fucking gullible, but oh my god, just Chrissy, why? <laughs> Honey, no. <laughs> but, 
But there is no convincing her otherwise, seemingly. So, I mean, you know what? You do you. I mean, on the off chance she's right, I guess she'll live and the rest of us won't. So, there's that. But, uh, anyway. That is it for this month's list of September favorites. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. What was your favorite thing of all the things that I shared this month? What was just your own personal favorite thing from September? Let me know down below as well as anything else you feel like leaving me. Make sure you're following my social media accounts. They're all listed down below, which... You know, I know I've been saying it the last few videos, but if you're artistically minded, I'm doing Inktober this year. I'm already a day behind, but shh. Uh, but I am doing it this year, having fun with it. Um, I don't claim to be a good artist, just one who's passionate about what she does and enjoys doing it. So if you want to see the updates on what I'm doing there, you should probably go follow those. Most likely Instagram, where I actually remember to update it. Um, uh, go ahead and follow those. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. So, anyway, guys, until next time, bye bye.